Just a few weeks ago around the Game Developer Conference, AMD announced their direct competitor to Nvidia's smart upscaling technology DLSS called Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0. And last week this technology was finally released to the public and of course the first benchmarks are already out there. So in today's video we are not only going to look into how FSR 2.0 holds up against FSR 1.0 and especially against DLSS, but we also take a brief look into how this technology works and we will definitely discuss what this means for console gamers. Hello gamers from around the world, this is Boxenberger, the video game enthusiast from Germany with another video on Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0. About two months ago I already made a video explaining more in depth how the version 2.0 changed towards the version 1.0. I will definitely link that in the description down below and in today's video we are going to focus more on how it actually performs in gamers hands and why console gamers should be excited for this. And to understand that we will definitely discuss the principles in how this upscaling technology actually works. And to really see all the differences in the footage in this video I highly recommend to set your player to full 4K 60fps to get the best audio visual experience I can deliver to you and while you are at it it would be awesome of you to also consider to hit the like and subscribe button and maybe even turn on the notification bell to not miss out on future content. And maybe you want to share this also to some fellow gamers that might be interested in this technology. Ok thank you guys you are awesome now let's have a look into FSR 2.0. I want to start with a high level recap on how this technology actually works. AMD's FSR 1.0 was released last year and while it did what it was supposed to do and that means to allow the game to render the image at a lower base resolution and then upscale the resolution in a smart way to save computational resources and the results of AMD's FSR 1.0 were nowhere near to the bench on the market and that is DLSS 2.0 from Nvidia. Well now we are actually at DLSS 2.3. But followers of this channel know that we have been discussing it here that when DLSS 1.0 launched it had also a lot of issues. It was nowhere near the quality that the version 2.0 introduced and now we are seeing similar things with FSR 2.0. Well FSR 1.0 was basically a classic upscaling technology like checkerboarding. That means that it relied on a single image and then upscaled image per image. Considering the simplicity of that algorithm the results were fine but with FSR 2.0 they introduced a temporal upscaling algorithm that is at least least in its concept, similar to DLSS 2.0. But the way how this is achieved is different because it does not rely on dedicated tensor cores aka AA math optimized silicon. The idea behind FSR 2.0 is to be open source and available to all kinds of hardware. That means that it also runs of course on Nvidia hardware as well as Intel GPUs. Now the difference in between FSR 1.0 and 2.0 is that the algorithm is using not a frame by frame input to calculate the upscaling. It uses the data data from several frames into one single buffer and that helps the upscaling technology a lot. Because that means that the algorithm is based on analyzing the motion of objects in subsequent images. Or simplified a single frame cannot be upscaled properly because the algorithm needs the slightly jittery image from frame to frame to fully work. So basically the camera needs to move at least one pixel to the side from an image to image in order to get the information required. The algorithm then assigns each pixel an important score based on the old information of the previous image and it calculates then the target pixel. And this basically results in something called the motion vectors. And just like DLSS the technology feeds depth information into the algorithm helping to understand the distance of objects from the camera for each single pixel and that helps of course again for prioritization and additionally of course they use color information to upscale the image. Now I want to leave it at that. Again I already made a video going into some of these aspects a little bit more in depth but I hope at least on a high level it is clear what this technology means and how it works and now let's have a look into how this technology actually performs. First reviewers for instance at Tech Power Up stated looks amazing just as good as DLSS 2.0 and if we have a look here on a first comparison from another tech channel you can really tell that there have been significant improvements over AMD's FSR 1.0 and that FSR 2.0 is now in the ballpark of DLSS and that is actually very impressive because we know that 
that DLSS is already at its iteration 2.3 and has been out for a while and of course with that it had the chance to improve on its initial problems. Now for AMD to come out with an algorithm that is not relying on dedicated hardware but that is hardware agnostic and can be applied to basically every GPU is very impressive. And that is very interesting, no matter which review you ask, everyone was surprised by the quality because FSR 1.0 was kind of a disappointment, but this one here is very very promising. Even the tech experts from Digital Foundry were quite impressed on how it all performed. They've pointed out a few minor drawbacks when compared to DLSS 2.3, like for instance a flickering of thin objects. Now since we talked earlier about how this algorithm actually works, this isn't a surprise that very thin objects like wires and stuff are challenging for this upscaling algorithm, considering that it relies on movement of a pixel on screen. And of course if there is a space in between each frame because the camera is moving, this will result in unstable pixels. Again, FSR 2.0 is only out for a few days now and I have zero doubt that this will be addressed from AMD in future iterations of the algorithm. Another minor setback from FSR 2.0 towards DLSS was pointed out by Tech Power Up, and that is ghosting, which is basically a result of the depth information in the image. You can think of this like this. Our human brain is super smart and can easily tell in an image how far an object or a pixel is away from the actual camera, but of course an algorithm can have issues with that. But AMD is already using depth information to calculate that and I think this is also an issue that will be addressed in future iterations of the algorithm. Now overall the results are very impressive, but so far these comparisons have only been made on PC. Back in early April, Microsoft announced that FSR 2.0 is now natively supported by the Xbox development kit, the GDK. And that means that a lot of console gamers, especially on the Xbox side of things, expect games to actually use this technology. Now if we look at the list of games that support FSR 2.0, we can already see four console games on that list with Deathloop, the upcoming Forspoken and two Xbox games with the Microsoft Flight Simulator and Grounded. While Sony hasn't officially talked about supporting the technology on their development kit, we know that the algorithm is designed to be supported on all kind of hardware, so I would be surprised if FSR 2.0 wouldn't make its way onto the PlayStation eventually. And on Xbox I would be also surprised if we wouldn't have very soon updates for especially the games that support the technology already on PC, because now the development kit is already equipped with the support of FSR 2.0. Regardless of that, console gamers can really look forward to have such a technology on their system that is an actual competitor to DLSS 2.0. I've said it many many times that computing games in native 4K is a waste of computational resources and those resources can be rather used to enhance the overall quality of the animations, the graphics, the physics, the simulation, the lighting, the particle effects etc etc. And DLSS on PCs is in fact a game changer because it is impressive what it can do with little to no impact on the image quality. And now, thanks to FSR 2.0, there is an open source solution that does not rely on dedicated tensor cores and with that it will definitely help the mask market. But with that I want to come to an end of this video. I do hope you found this informative and that you are as excited as I am to see AMD's FSR 2.0 implemented into more games, especially on console games. And with that we will gain an overall boost not just to performance but also developers will have more resources to make graphics better beyond the pixel counts. And I definitely want to hear your thoughts on the first comparisons of FSR 2.0. Are you excited for the technology? Do you consider this to be a competitor towards DLSS? Leave your comments down below. And since the game showcase season is upon us, I would be surprised if we wouldn't learn more about games that support the technology over the next weeks and months and you can definitely count on me covering all the tech news on this channel. So if you enjoyed this video it would be awesome of you to consider to hit the like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And if you know a gamer or two who might be interested in this, it would be awesome of you if you share this out. I also want to say a big thank you to everyone who supports this channel with channel memberships to get early access to all my videos, with the super thanks in the comment sections and of course the super chats during the weekly live show I have here on my channel. And besides here on YouTube you can also hit me up on Twitter where I share a lot of opinions and gaming discussions, but for now I thank you very much for watching, I see you the next time and game on! Thank you.